Hey everybody, today's video is all about the Beatles album, Help. And these are 10 facts that you maybe didn't know about the Beatles album, Help. Now, this album was released in 1965, and like all of the early, earlier Beatles albums, there is a stereo mix and a mono mix of the album. Uh, both of the mixes are very good. Now, the other interesting thing about the Help album is there's also a 1965 stereo mix, and then there's a later 19, mid-1980s mix uh, that George Martin made uh, for the CD release, or the first CDs that were released for Help. So there's actually three different mixes for the album Help that you can get. Uh, but these happen to be the 1965 stereo mix and the mono mix. And uh, this pressing right here is uh, from the uh, late 70s Blue Box, UK Blue Box stereo. And this is the 2014 mono remaster that was released. That's a very excellent, excellent sounding record. And as I'm sure a lot of you know, or maybe you don't know, but now you will know, uh, my favorite pressing, though, of the Beatles' Help album is the pressing from Germany, and it has a, a different cover on here. And this happens to be a uh, mid-70s Germany, uh, German pressing, rather, of the Beatles' Help album. It just sounds excellent, has a lot more bass, uh, has a very wide stereo image. Just a very, very, very nice pressing of this album. But let's jump right into 10 facts about the Beatles' album Help. And I've got notes. Here we go. So... Fact number one. Um, so the title of the, so by the way, I should go back a little bit. Uh, this is still fact number one, by the way. But as I'm sure all of you out there know, but maybe some, some of you don't know, uh, Help is also the title of the Beatles' second film that they made. It was called Help. And this happens to be the soundtrack to the film as well. So all the songs on the first side of the album were in the movie Help. And then all the songs on the B side, just like A Hard Day's Night, are just a part of the album, and they weren't in the film. Uh, so, first fact, originally the title of the film was gonna be called Eight Arms to Hold You, um, and early, early pressings of the single Ticket to Ride, which Ticket to Ride is on the album help, early uh, pressings of the single uh, in America, they said um, from, the, from the upcoming United Artists film, Eight Arms to Hold You, now that was originally going to be the title and apparently uh, Dick Lester um, was hoping that John or Paul or John and Paul would write a song called Eight Arms to Hold You. It never happened. I don't even know if they ever even considered it because I'm sure just that title alone kind of threw them off as far as it wasn't really what they would want to do. Uh, and in the end, John came up with the song Help and that became the title of the film and of course the album. So, uh, but it's kind of crazy to think about if the Beatles actually wrote a song or attempted to write a song called Eight Arms to Hold You and what that would have sounded like and how that would have been on the album. And the album would have been titled Eight Arms to Hold You along with the film. So kind of weird to think about. Okay, fact number two. There are three original Lennon-McCartney songs that were recorded during the help sessions that didn't make it to the finished album. Hard to believe. Now, this never, ever happened uh, again, really, um, as far as having unreleased Lennon McCartney songs that didn't make it to an album, but they were recorded for that album. Now, it could be said about the White Album that there were a lot of songs that didn't make it on that album, but they actually weren't recorded during the sessions and didn't make it on there. So, uh, but, so with Help, there are three of them. Uh, they are a song called That Means A Lot, which is a Paul McCartney song and a Paul McCartney vocal. Uh, and it's just like kind of a big ballady. It's a ballad that gets a little bit on the side of, of a rock song as well. Let me just make sure we're, okay, good. I have a microphone up here and that's how I get audio. So I'm making sure that's still going. Um, so that means a lot. It's kind of a big ballad, Paul McCartney song where he does has a bit of like a rocky vocal on it. I think it's a very, very good song. The other song is a song called If You've Got Troubles, which is a song that John and Paul wrote for Ringo to sing on the album. And they recorded that song as well. Uh, it's kind of a funny song, and you can just kind of tell that the Beatles are just kind of going through the motions. Uh, it's got this riff that just goes over and over and over and over again in the song. It's also got pretty silly lyrics about uh, diamond rings and all that kind of stuff. And the other Lennon-McCartney song was recorded during the help sessions that didn't make it to the album. 
is a song called Wait. And of course, Wait eventually was released on the Beatles' next album, After Help, called Rubber Soul. The Beatles uh, added some overdubs to the recording from the Help Sessions and released it on Rubber Soul. But it's crazy to think that there were three Lennon-McCartney originals that were recorded during these sessions that didn't make it to the album. So the Beatles just had a wealth of material uh, at, around this time period. And for those of you who want to um, listen to That Means A Lot and If You've Got Troubles, uh, they are can both be found on the Beatles Anthology 2. So definitely check out those recordings. They're very fascinating. Uh, and I think uh, of between If You've Got Troubles and That Means A Lot, I think That Means A Lot is the better song. And in fact, I think it's a great, great song. So definitely check that out. Okay, fact number three. Um, this is a very crazy thing to think about. This just shows how amazing and how diverse Paul McCartney is as a writer and as a performer. So, the songs Yesterday, I'm Down, and I Just Seen a Face were all recorded on the same day in one session. Yes, the arguably the most famous ballad of all time, Yesterday, uh, was recorded the same day as one of the Beatles' most insane early rockers, a song called I'm Down, which was the B-side of Help. I'm Down does not appear on the Beatles' album Help, but it is on Past Masters, but it was recorded during these sessions. Um, and then the really folky song, I've Just Seen a Face, was also recorded on the same day. And that day um, was June 14th, 1965. Now, of course, yesterday received a, a string overdub that was on uh, June 17th, but Paul recorded his vocal and his acoustic guitar uh, all on June 14th for yesterday, and then the band did a whole run through of I'm Down, and I've Just Seen a Face. Just insane to think about how those three songs were recorded all in one day. Uh, most bands wouldn't even consider doing something like that, um, but the Beatles did it, Paul McCartney did it, and all three of those songs are just absolute Beatle classics, in my opinion. So pretty amazing to think about. Number four, fact number four. Uh, John originally wrote Help, the song Help, as a slow ballad, and it was, uh, well, later he said it was like a confessional song about how he was feeling at that time, uh, that just the craziness of Beatlemania, uh, and he was calling out for help. But of course, the Beatles, uh, when they ended up recording it, they turned it into a fast, uh, upbeat pop song and turned it into a number one single. Um, but years later, John was interviewed about the song Help, and he said that he wanted to re-record it as a slow uh, kind of piano ballad that he originally intended for it. Uh, of course, he never got to do that, but it would be really interesting to hear what Help would have sounded like. Now, there is a chance to hear what Help would have sounded like because in the mid-70s, I think it's the mid-70s, they can't really exactly place when this was recorded, John did record a slow piano version of Help, and there's a bootleg out there where you can hear him uh, running through Help in this kind of slow way. So check it out on YouTube, just search uh, Help. I think it's listed as Help Demo, but it's actually not a demo for Help at all. It was recorded in the 70s, um, way after the Beatles released their single uh, of Help. So seek that out, because it's very interesting to listen to. Okay, fact number five. This is again about the title song, Help. So the mono mix of Help and the stereo mix are really, really different. Um, the mono mix has a completely different lead vocal from John uh, on, on the song um, than the stereo mix. And the, way, the best way I can describe it is that the, the lead vocal on the mono mix of Help, it sounds a little bit weaker in my opinion, a little bit thinner. Uh, and then the stereo mix of Help, John's vocal is double-tracked and sounds really, really strong. Now, my theory is that um, on the mono mix of Help, you're hearing one of, the, one of the vocals, one of the two vocals that John did for the lead vocal of Help. You're hearing one of the double-tracked vocal parts that's a little bit louder, and it's not quite as strong. Because when you're double-tracking a vocal, you originally record a vocal, um, you do the best take you can of a vocal and do it really strong. And then when you go to do an overdub to give it that really extra thick feeling, that double track vocal sound, the overdub vocal, you're singing it with the vocal you just did. And sometimes when you're singing it, you don't sing it quite as strong because you're trying to match that vocal and to get that blended sound. 
So that second vocal isn't quite as strong. It could be a little bit weird, but it sounds so good together with the original vocal. But if you were to take away the original vocal and just listen to the overdub vocal, it would sound a little bit weak. It would still be right, but it would sound a little bit weak. And I kind of think that's what happened here with the mono mix. I, I could be wrong, but that's my little theory there as to why the mono and the stereo mix sound so different as far as the lead vocal goes. That being said, the mono mix is still very, very good and it's worth owning for sure. That's why I always recommend with a lot of the early Beatles albums to own the uh, stereo version and the mono version because they're both excellent. Okay, fact number six. Now, I have to give you all a warning here. This is a fact uh, about a certain sound going on in this song that once you hear it, it might ruin this song for you forever. So if you don't want to hear about this fact, skip ahead to fact number seven. So you've been warned. Here we go. So the song You're Gonna Lose That Girl, which is an excellent song, it appears in the film Help, and it's on side one of the album. Um, there's a piano that was added to the song, and the piano is really, really out of tune with the rest of the instruments in the song. Now, it's really, really noticeable. It's way more noticeable in the mono mix than the stereo mix. In the stereo mix, if you really, really listen closely, you can hear that the piano is pretty, is pretty out of tune, but it doesn't, it doesn't really ruin the whole track. In the mono mix, in my opinion, once you know that piano is out of tune, it really ruins the track because it's like you can't not hear that out of tune piano. So kind of, kind of crazy and kind of weird that they left that piano in there and didn't really pick up on it because it's just so obviously out of tune. I think even if you're not a musician, you don't have a trained ear, you can hear that there's something wrong with that piano. Um, and honestly, it could just be down to um, the fact that maybe the tape, when, it, when they were recording the piano overdub, the tape was playing either a little bit fast or a little bit slow um, than it normally would have been, so the piano was a little out of tune, or the piano was just out of tune with the other instruments uh, when they started. So just kind of a weird, weird little fact there. Now, that being said, the song You're Gonna Lose That Girl is an excellent, excellent song. I love that song so much. So it's kind of a drag that that piano part um, is, is so out of tune, but that's how it goes. Okay, fact number seven. So the song Yesterday, which is a just insanely famous song that Paul wrote, um, the song Yesterday, throughout the whole song, it's basically just Paul McCartney uh, singing just one vocal and playing his acoustic guitar with a string quartet. That's the whole song. Except at uh, 52 seconds into Yesterday, all of a sudden Paul's vocal becomes double tracked for just one line and it, it never comes back again. It always just remains the single voice. So it's kind of weird that all of a sudden there's just a double tracked vocal part for Paul. Now, I have a theory as to what happened here. Now here's my theory, I wrote it down so I could be very clear about it. My theory is that when the string part was being overdubbed, which was overdubbed at a later date, um, the musicians didn't use headphones because usually when you overdub, you will have headphones so you can hear the track and you can play whatever part you're adding to the track. And then the original track that you're hearing won't bleed through onto the new track that you're recording. But back in the day in the 60s, um, a lot of times they didn't use headphones and what they would do is they would play the original track to musicians over speakers in the studio, but they would have the speakers pretty far away so they wouldn't really be picked up on the mics that were recording the new instruments, the score, in this case, the string instruments. But in this case, um, while the string players were doing this overdub, during that part where all of a sudden vo Paul's vocal sounds like it's double tracked, the original vocal was really loud and it came through the speakers and it bled into the microphones that the strings were, that were recording the strings. So at that point, you hear Paul's vocal come through and since it's a little bit off of time, just a fraction of a second off of time, it sounds like Paul's vocal is double tracked because you're getting an artificial double tracking. The best way to describe this is, it's almost like a film negative. If you have a film negative, let's say that a film negative is a is of my hand, right? So it's like that. If you were to take an exact copy of a photo of my hand, like a negative, and you put it over it just like that, it would be perfect. 
right? It would just be a perfect. But if you moved it just slightly, it looks like there's two hands, right? All of a sudden you get a doubling effect. And that's how it is with recording when it comes to um, artificial double tracking. And that I think is what happened accidentally with this Paul vocal. Now, I did some digging and George Martin actually talked about this. There's a quote from him that he gave during the love sessions uh, for when they did the love album. And here's George Martin's quote. It's very fascinating. George Martin said about the song yesterday, Paul played his guitar and sang it live, a mic on the guitar and a mic on the voice. But of course, the voice comes the voice comes onto the guitar mic and the guitar comes onto the voice mic. So there's leakage there. Then I said I'd do a string quartet. The musicians objected to playing with headphones, so I gave them Paul's voice and his guitar on two speakers on either side of their microphones. So there's a leakage of Paul's guitar and voice on the string tracks. So that explains why Paul's voice sounds like it's double tracked during that moment, because at that moment, the track playing in the studio becomes a little bit louder for some reason, and it sounds like double tracking. There you go. Okay, fact number eight. So I'm sure when I read uh, fact number two to you, talking about three songs that the Beatles recorded during the sessions that didn't make it to the album, you were wondering, wait a second, isn't there another song they recorded that didn't make it to the album? And yes, it's true. This is a song though that it's not a Lennon McCartney original, and it is actually a cover song written by Larry Williams, and it's a song called Bad Boy. Bad Boy was recorded during the same session as the song Dizzy Miss Lizzie, which was also written by Larry Williams, and it was recorded on what happened to be Larry Williams' birthday. So a lot of crazy coincidences going on here. So Bad Boy was recorded, same session as Dizzy Miss Lizzie, um, and Bad Boy was never intended to be on the Help album, although it was recorded during the Help sessions. Bad Boy was recorded strictly for the North American market, and it eventually was released on the U.S. album Beatles 6, which was released on Capitol Records, um, and it was never released in the U.K., not until a whole year later when it was finally released on the 1966 compilation album A Collection of Beatles Oldies. So kind of interesting to think about Bad Boy and to think that it was recorded during the help sessions but wasn't on the album. And it's fun to play that game, as always, with you know songs that didn't make it to the album, as to if you had to put Bad Boy on the album, where would you place it and what song would it replace? Now for me, I would replace Bad I would replace I would put Bad Boy in place of Dizzy Miss Lizzy. Now while I like Dizzy Miss Lizzy on the album, I think Bad Boy is a much better recording, and I love John Lennon's uh, just overall performance on it. I think it would have been really cool to hear Bad Boy as the last song on Help. Just my opinion, but that's what I think. Okay, fact number nine. By the way, number nine backwards is Turn Me On Dead Man. There you go. Uh, okay, number nine. Yesterday was, is famously, yesterday is famously known as the song that the Beatles added overdubs onto, right? Like one of the very first famous times they added outside musicians to record a string quartet on there. But oddly enough, it's not the first time that the Beatles added um, outside musicians onto a recording. In fact, that honor belongs to another song on the Help album, a song written by mostly by John called You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. And this song, You Gotta Hide Your Love Away, it got the very first outside musician um, overdub onto a Beatles recording and it was by a musician named John Scott and he recorded two flute parts uh, in February 1965 onto You've Got to Hide Your Love Away. Uh, so that's quite a bit before the string quartet was added to yesterday which was added in June of 1965. So it was not yesterday that had the first outside musician overdub. It's You've Got to Hide Your Love Away with flutes by John Scott. So interesting to kind of know. Okay, and the last fact, fact number 10. Um, so famously, Yesterday started out with a dummy set of lyrics. Before Paul had any of the real words or had the title Yesterday, he called the song Scrambled Eggs. Uh, and the lyrics, I think, went like, Scrambled Eggs, Oh My Baby, How I Love Your Legs. Just silly, stupid lyrics, right? Um, and also on the Help album, though, there are two other songs that had working titles that are kind of weird to think about. The first one is a song by John called It's Only Love, 
and its original working title was That's a Nice Hat. Kind of weird. The other song is the song I Just Seen a Face, which is a Paul song. And that was originally titled Auntie Jin's Theme because Auntie Jin, who is Paul's aunt, uh, apparently loved the melody to I Just Seen a Face. And of course, famously, Auntie Jin um, was called out in the wing song Let Em In. Uh, Sister Susie, uh, Brother John, or I forget, I'm messing up the lyric completely. Whoa. But anyway, uh, the lyric, she's in there. Auntie Jin, Martin Luther, da da da. Anyway, I'm, I can't think of the lyric right now. I don't know why. I love that song, but it's okay. You look it up. Let Them In by Wings on uh, Wings at the Speed of Sound. Check it out. Okay, well, those were 10 facts that you maybe didn't know about the Beatles album, Help. Maybe you knew all those facts. I don't know. Anyway, I hope all of you are uh, trying to have the best possible time you can have um, during these crazy, crazy times. And I'm going to be making... Uh, as many videos as I possibly can because just like all of you, I'm also just staying in my house as much as possible and uh, I have a lot more free time on my hands. So I will be making as many videos as I can because A, they're really fun to make for me. B, I know that a lot of you out there uh, in my last video in the comments, you said that the videos, um, you really enjoy the videos and they help you pass the time. So if that's one little thing I can do to kind of help, then I'm totally into it. So stay tuned, lots more videos coming this week and in the next maybe coming weeks or so. And uh, also I might do a uh, YouTube live uh, session here, maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow, not sure yet, but stay tuned for that. and. Uh, that's it. By the way, if you want to, go to my website, needlemeetsvinyl.com. I have lots of records on there. Uh, you can check out what I've got on there. And even if you don't want to buy, uh, for each of the albums I've listed, uh, there's a bunch of information for each album. So maybe if you want to pass some time, you can go on there and just read about one of your favorite albums. Maybe there's some information on there you didn't know about. So lots of stuff to do, lots of very productive stuff to do. And hey, by the way, everyone, this is the time that all of us record collectors have really been, we didn't know it was going to be like this, right? But we've always known that having this record collection would one day really, really pay off. This is the time when you have all kinds of time and you don't know what to do, listen to records. Because all of these beautiful, beautiful slices of art are waiting for you to give them in-depth listens and to just enjoy them to their full extent and now is the time so put on uh, a nice pair of headphones or just listen through a nice pair of speakers or just a crappy pair of speakers it doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying the music that's what it's all about and uh, in my opinion and probably yours too the best way to listen to music is on vinyl so let's enjoy our record collections and uh, enjoy all this great music that these brilliant, brilliant people recorded and continue to record. And uh, hey, we're all in this together and uh, I'm here for you. I know a lot of you are here for me and hey, I think that's great. So uh, have a good one. Stay healthy. More videos to come and bye for now.